when our cortisol is chronically elevated from trauma or chronic stress, our gut lining begins to break down. And this leads to something called intestinal permeability. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But if you're ready to level up your life and get results that truly matter in your health, business, mindset, and relationships, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to Sheer Madness, where we have unscripted, real conversations with the world's top athletes, entrepreneurs, and coaches. Discover real world and tactical advice from the best in the business. Let's go. When your gut is off, it literally affects every system in your entire body, leading to symptoms of anxiety, depression, brain fog, because the gut and the brain are highly interconnected. This leads to chronic bloating, literally looking six months pregnant at the end of every single day, which is exactly what happened to me when my gut was off, to hormone imbalances, to thyroid issues, high cholesterol, inability to lose weight, the list goes on and on, which is why when we can heal our gut and optimize our microbiome, everything starts to fall into place. And when I healed my gut, literally everything improved. Bloating went away, my skin cleared up, my mental health improved, and it was so much easier to reach and maintain my ideal body composition, which is why I am so passionate about gut health with my functional medicine practice. And it's the exact reason why I created my gut health repair program. Look, I get it. Not a lot of people can really afford to work with us through one-on-one coaching and functional medicine testing with Rachel Sheer Nutrition, but my gut health repair program is literally a fraction of the investment. And you're going to be learning everything that I've done with not only myself to heal my own gut, but also with over a thousand Rachel Share Nutrition clients as well. We'll be diving into my three R approach to healing the gut, removing gut triggers and toxins, restoring your gut lining, rebuilding back your gut microbiome, and then optimizing and re-inoculating the gut with good bacteria. You see, there's a massive difference between healing and overall health. Sometimes we need to heal the gut and get it to a place where we can then step into optimization. And I see a lot of people doing this backwards, and this is why they find themselves chasing their tail and not really getting the results that they optimally want with their gut issues, skin issues, hormone imbalances, or even weight. On top of that, with my gut health repair program, you're going to be getting a step-by-step guide to calculating and hitting your macros so we can also focus on your skeletal muscle mass because your muscle literally is the organ of longevity and it plays a massive role in your overall metabolic rate and therefore your weight loss. So by optimizing your skeletal muscle mass by getting in enough protein in conjunction with a customized workout program, we'll be able to not only lose fat, build muscle, and do this simultaneously with healing and optimizing our gut health. How freaking incredible is that? So you're going to be also getting a three-month workout program to focus on strength training so we can create the body of your dreams. And like I said, it's for a fraction of the cost of what it would be to normally work with me for one-on-one coaching and functional medicine testing. So you don't want to miss out on this opportunity. And I'm going to be doing even an additional discount coming this Black Friday. So if you want to opt in so you don't miss out on any of these notifications, go ahead and click the link here in the show notes and we will subscribe you so you are first to be notified when we launch this up upcoming gut health repair program starting this December. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sheer Madness. Today, I want to talk about how trauma affects the gut and how we can work to improve something called our body's vagus nerve. Now, your gut is connected to almost every system in your body. From your immune system, your metabolism, your hormones, your thyroid, adrenal, skin, and even your brain and mental health too. Which is why when the gut is off, it's often the root cause of so many chronic health issues 
like autoimmune conditions, acne, rosacea, estrogen dominance, hypothyroidism, and even mental health issues. Gut dysbiosis and inflammation in the gut has been linked to several mental illnesses, including anxiety, depression, but also even autism spectrum disorder, neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and dementia. And all of this is happening through something called our body's gut-brain access, which is the ability of our gut microbiome to bi-directionally communicate with the brain and vice versa. So let's talk about first how trauma unaddressed in the body over time can negatively impact our body's gut health. So one of the reasons why I am so fascinated with the gut and the brain connection is honestly, you guys, because of my own shit. I come from a lot of trauma from my upbringing, a lot of neglect, and to make a long story short, I would wake up most nights when I was a kid crying, bawling my eyes out, wondering where my mom was, why she was gone randomly in the middle of the night. And I had essentially very inconsistent love. And this developed this anxious attachment in me. That is something that I've had to consciously work through later on in life. Trauma doesn't always have to be like big traumas like we tend to think about. Trauma essentially is anything that happened that really changed the way in which we relate to ourselves. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. But the way in which we relate to ourselves today is essentially the way we think, feel, and view ourselves. And this relationship we have with ourselves was established from our earliest relationships, our parents. As a kid, when you didn't receive the love that you needed, when you had emotionally dismissive parents or insensitive parents, or you had unavailable parents, inconsistent love and nurturing, what actually happens is this creates an imprint or memory in our body's nervous system at a very early age, along with actually changing the way in which we view ourselves or we relate to ourselves. When there is a history of trauma that's not been addressed, what is really actually happening is the body gets what I call stuck in a hyper aroused state. And this hyper aroused state is something called our body's fight or flight or sympathetic response. And we'll dive into here in a little bit what the sympathetic and parasympathetic response are. But this fight or flight state or this stress state eventually leads to something called poor vagal tone, which is that connection between our gut and our brain. When we've had this kind of inconsistent love, inconsistent attachment, not only does a child begin to view themselves sometimes in a negative way because that's how kids operate. They think mom's gone. It's because I'm bad. Mom's mad at me because there's something wrong with me. A kid doesn't have the ability to think that it has anything to do that's actually happening in the parent's life, but only has the ability to think that it is all because of them. And that creates the way we view ourselves. So that's one way that trauma can kind of manifest in our life later on. But what also happens is there are true changes that take place in our body. And two of those changes that take place are actually through our body's vagus nerve and also the connection between two parts of the brain, the prefrontal cortex and our amygdala. So let's talk first about the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve essentially is the mind-body connection. It is the connection from the largest nerve in the body, from the gut all the way through the heart to the brain. 
And it is also a bundle of nerves that is connecting this nerve to every other system in the body. And in fact, the word vagus actually means wanderer in Latin, which actually represents how the nerve wanders all over the body and reaches various organs. So if you picture the information moving in the body as a network, about 80% of it moves up from the body to the brain, while only about 20% of the traffic actually moves from the brain all the way down to the gut. So that is a lot of traffic actually coming from the gut all the way to the brain, but it is still bi-directional. And in short, our body's vagus nerves main function is to activate our body's rest and digest state or our body's parasympathetic nervous system. Our parasympathetic nervous system is a part of our autonomic response. And really what it's trying to do is decrease heart rate, respiration, so we're calm and relaxed, decrease blood pressure, decrease stress hormones, and release a lot of those good feeling hormones, so like oxytocin, serotonin. But specifically in the gut, it actually is increasing blood flow to the digestive system. It's releasing neurotransmitters like acetylcholine that regulate muscle contractions, therefore increasing the contractions in the gut and the motility in the gut, as well as increasing gastric secretions of pancreatic enzymes, bile, so we can break down and absorb all of our food to decrease inflammation in the gut and also strengthen our gut barrier function. That is really at the core what our vagus nerve is doing. Our vagus nerve is helping our body enter into this rest and digest state to focus on being relaxed, feeling good, and digesting the food that we need to. But coming back to the trauma piece, when we have this history of trauma that has not been addressed or we haven't really healed from yet, which is by the way, 100% possible to heal through. The body lives in that hyper aroused state. So always on high alert because the body was so used to stress. Essentially, it is looking out in any way, shape or form when that next perceived threat or danger is going to occur. And this isn't always a logical thought process. It's actually very subconscious. But what is actually happening is when we get in this triggered place and triggered meaning something happens where our central nervous system brings us back to the memory of that first perceived event, the body is reacting by activating this opposite system our body's sympathetic nervous system. And our vagus nerve is being deactivated. Kind of simply put is when we have trauma, our body is constantly living in this hyper aroused state, looking for these perceived threats because of the stress that we went through when we were younger, and it is constantly deactivating our body's vagus nerve, which works to aid in digestion and also keep us in a calm and relaxed state and prepare us for fight, flight, or freeze, which is that body's sympathetic neuro response. Now, our sympathetic neuro response is always what is activated in response to stress. And this isn't always a bad thing because when there are short-term stressors, we need to be able to deal with these. So when you do hard exercise, your sympathetic nervous system is activated and your vagus nerve is inactivated along with your body's parasympathetic response. And this is a short-term stressor. That's what our body's supposed to do. When we're exercising, we're not thinking about resting and digesting. We have some cortisol increasing. We're, our body is trying to 
get us through this small little stressor. Now, these short-term stressors are beneficial, but it's when it becomes a chronic stress, whether this could be chronic relationship stress, chronic work stress, or this unaddressed trauma that this really starts to become problematic because as you can think about with trauma, there's not really a stressor there. Their body is just activating to a perceived version of stress that happened a long time ago based off of this trigger. And when this sympathetic nervous system is activated or this fight flight response is activated, what's now happening, which is the opposite of our body's parasympathetic nervous response is we get an increase in heart rate and respiration. We get an increase in blood pressure. We have an increase of blood flow to our muscles, to our lungs, and other essential organs so our body can prepare to fight or do what it needs to do to protect itself. And it's decreasing the blood flow away from the digestive tract and those reproductive organs, shutting down that digestive tract so no longer releasing any kind of pancreatic enzymes or bile to break down food. And it's also releasing stress hormones like cortisol and neurotransmitters like epinephrine to make us stronger, faster, along with glucose or blood sugar being released adequately to help us use this for a quick form of energy. So all of this is happening when we're in, whether it's an acute stress state, a chronic stress state, or a perceived stressed state, which is what is happening very often with trauma. This short-term activation of our body's sympathetic nervous system is not problematic. We need it. It helps us in so many ways. It's when our cortisol, our stress hormone, is chronically activated. It's when our digestive system is chronically shut down that we start to see that this can lead to chronic gut issues. When our cortisol is chronically activated all the time, what is actually happening is that cortisol starts to break things down. You know, bodybuilders try to avoid cortisol as much as possible because it breaks down muscle tissue. But we don't often think about that our gut lining is also a muscle tissue and it's only one cell layer thick. So when our cortisol is chronically elevated, from trauma or chronic stress, our gut lining begins to break down. And this leads to something called intestinal permeability, where now we're getting food, bacteria, and toxins leaking into our bloodstream, triggering an immune and inflammatory response. And this leads to now other chronic health issues. This can lead to autoimmune conditions. This can lead to hormone imbalances, skin issues like acne, rosacea. It can lead to all of these health issues and even those mental health issues like anxiety, depression, and brain fog. It's also been shown that this can lead to something called a leaky brain, where we're now also getting toxins and other things leaking into our brain through our blood-brain barrier and causing now neuroinflammation or inflammation of the brain. All right, guys, I got a giveaway coming your way, and I'm going to be giving my entire gut health repair program to one lucky winner here at the end of November. And there are three rules to enter this contest. Number one, you have to follow the Sheer Madness podcast on Instagram. Number two, you have to take a screenshot of you listening to this episode tagging at Rachel Shear, at Rachel Shear Nutrition, and the Shear Madness podcast on Instagram. And then number three, you just have to leave us an incredible review on how much you love the Shear Madness podcast on iTunes. That's it. And one lucky person will be winning my entire gut health repair program, which is a 12-week program that's going to help you heal 
your gut issues, but also optimize your overall gut health because your gut is connected to every system in your entire body. This is one of the best ways you can optimize your overall health. On top of it, you're also going to be getting a three month workout program and also a guide to tracking and hitting your macros. So we can also focus on building and optimizing your skeletal muscle mass. So you don't want to miss out on this incredible opportunity. I have one lucky winner who's going to be getting this. So check it out and good luck. So that's one way how this affects our body systematically overall, but there's also ways in which still this chronic stress and trauma can really, really negatively affect our body. For people who have trauma, they can develop something called low vagal tone, where their body is so often in this, you know, stressed state because of that perceived version of danger or that trigger from that memory that it is actually hard for them to get into that rest and digest state and their body is not able to really digest the way that it needs to. Now, another thing that happens when we have unaddressed traumas, there's actually a change in two parts of the brain. That's the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. And in a recent paper, researchers actually found that female rats in particular, females, not males, but developed these abnormal connections between this amygdala and the prefrontal cortex part of the brain in response specifically to neglect. Now, you can think of the amygdala as part of the brain that drives that so-called fight or flight response, where the prefrontal cortex is best known as part of the brain involved in decision-making, impulses, and self-control. When you see something that might be a threat, say a tiger, say someone cutting you off in traffic, because there's probably not a whole lot of tri tigers available now, what is happening is your amygdala is firing off signals to several areas of the brain, including that prefrontal cortex, and indicating that you should be frightened. And that prefrontal cortex is responding by integrating information from other areas of the brain, like context clues, meaning like, okay, the tiger can't reach us, or okay, we're safe um, here, even though like I just got cut off in traffic, to prior memories. And it is really this connection between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala that can lead to this increase in anxiety-like behaviors, even in the absence of something that maybe could be anxiety-provoking overall. And that's because that fear part of the brain is overly stimulating that decision and impulsive part of the brain, causing it to go into fear and self-protection. That part of the brain is actually developed in that beginning part of our life. So it's really two ways that this unaddressed trauma impacts our brain and our body. One is through the disruption of the vagus nerve, and the other is through the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex part of the brain. What is amazing about this is there are ways that we can actually heal. When we can address the root causes, you know, work on our trauma to heal from that, take a holistic approach, a functional approach, and do some things to work on our body's vagal tone, and also start to rewire the brain because our brain is plastic. It can change over time. We can create new connections in the brain. Healing is 100% possible. And there are actually some things you can do right now to work on strengthening your body's vagal tone. And I'm going to give you nine examples here. One of the first things you can do to work on activating your body's vagal tone or vagus nerve is cold water therapy. If you follow me on social media, you probably see on my stories that most every day I'm getting in my cold plunge 
and I'm getting in the ice bath. And why this is actually so beneficial is all of the blood flow when you're doing that is going towards your core. It's going towards your organs and it's actually activating your body's vagus nerve. That's that connection from your gut all the way to the brain. And on top of it, it's also helping your body get into more of that rest and digest state overall. So cold water therapy is amazing. This can be cold showers, cold plunge, ice baths, or even just splashing cold water on your face. That can really help activate your body's vagus nerve on top of it. Number two is diaphragmic breathing. Most of us take about 10 to 14 breaths every minute, but when we can slow down our breath to about six breaths over the course of a minute, this is a great way to relieve stress. And what we actually want to do is to breathe into our bellies. And I say that kind of funny because I was breathing into my belly as I was saying it. Our exhale should be long and slow. And our stomach should actually expand further than our chest does. And what's actually happening here is we are oxygenating our body. And when we oxygenate our body, this actually dissipates adrenaline, our, one of our body's stress hormones, and it also activates our body's vagus nerve. And if you think about it, by controlling our breath, we're slowing everything down and we're putting our body more in that rest and that digest state overall. So breath work is amazing. I do it all the time. And it's something that I try to do every single morning. So next time you're stressed, just notice your breath because what most of us are doing is we're holding our breath. Um, we're breathing really fast. We're just breathing in the top part of our chest and we're not taking a lot of these slow, deep breath, belly breaths. And that is one of the best ways you can actually get yourself out of stress and also help activate your body's vagus nerve. Number three is meditation and chanting. Now, meditation is amazing because what you're actually doing is you're slowing everything down. The word meditation actually means to know thyself. And I believe as we can really lean in and connect with ourself, what's coming up for us, how are we actually feeling, what's our breath like, we can really start to develop a better relationship with ourself. And I talked a little bit about earlier, you know, the way in which we relate to ourself is our thoughts, feelings, and views very often cultivated earlier on in life. But a lot of us don't even know the way in which we are relating to ourselves because most of us don't have a relationship with ourself. And if you want to have a good relationship, whether it's with anybody in life, you have to take time for that. So I believe meditation is one of those incredible ways where you can work on cultivating a relationship with yourself, tuning in with your body, listening to what feelings you have, listening to your breath, slowing everything down. Now the chanting part is one of the ways you can activate your body's vagus nerve. So chanting is that sometimes used in meditation practices, but just do that with me for a moment. Do that. And you should feel that literally radiate all the way from your chest, all the way down to your gut. That is that activation of your body's vagus nerves. So meditation, chanting, sometimes I'm just in the shower or I'm in my sauna and I'm just I'm, I'm that person who's being woo-woo and I'm just breathing, I'm doing the breath work and I'm, mm, you guys, don't knock it till you try it because it feels so good too. All right, number four, how you can strengthen your body's vagus nerve, probiotics. Your gut bacteria play a huge role in your brain function through that production of serotonin. Now, that serotonin that is produced in your gut doesn't actually cross through to your blood-brain barrier though. 
what it is doing is it is stimulating your body's vagus nerve. So neurotransmitters that fire stimulate various nerves around it. Basically put nerves that fire together, kind of start to wire together. So when we're producing more serotonin in our gut because of the good bacteria or probiotics, we're stimulating our body's vagus nerve. And in a 2011 study, they actually showed that the probiotic bifidobacterium longum normalized anxiety-like behavior in hippocampal brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, in mice with infectious colitis, which is that inflammation of the large intestine. And it did this by decreasing stress hormones and activating the body's vagus nerve. That all happened because of good bacteria in the gut. And in another study, they found that animals given the probiotic lactobacillus romanos increase positive changes to GABA receptors in the brain, which is the main central nervous system inhibitory neurotransmitter. So Valium, Xanax, guess how they all work? They act on GABA receptors in the brain to make you calm and relaxed. So essentially, Lactobacillus Romanos probiotics is basically nature's Valium. Woohoo! <laughs> and they also found through the supplementation of Lactobacillus Romanos that there was a reduction in the stress hormones, leading to reduced anxiety and depression. All of this is because of the positive impact that our gut microbiome can have on our brain, but also when we have bad bacteria there can be negative impacts on our brain, which is why working on our gut health is so essential. And one of the main things I love to start with, with all of our clients at Rachel Shear Nutrition. Number five, how we can strengthen our body's vagus nerve is acetylcholine. Choline is an amino acid that is that precursor to acetylcholine, and it is necessary to generate it. And in animal studies, they have shown that choline is actually involved in muscle control, memory, meditation of emotion, and behavior in the brain. So very simply put, high level, you guys, it is crucial for proper central nervous system functioning and promoting optimal vagal tone or vagus nerve activity. So you can get choline from food. And some of the best sources you can work to incorporate this into your diet is whole eggs, organ meat, um, olive oil organ meat because it's awesome for your gut health, caviar, fish, mushrooms, especially shiitake mushrooms, grass-fed beef, chicken, turkey, cruciferous vegetables, so that's your broccoli, your cauliflower, your Brussels sprouts, almonds, and red potatoes. So all of these are great sources of choline that can really help strengthen your body's vagal tone, but also help with proper central nervous system functioning. Number six, omega-3 fatty acids, got to get our good fats in. Omega-3s are an essential fat that our body actually cannot pr produce on its own. And it's one of the few fats that can actually cross through our blood brain barrier. And studies have shown that these omega-3 fatty acids not only play a role in inflammation in our brain, but also play a role in our gut health and our body's vagal tone. So we get most of our omega-3 fatty acids from fatty cuts of fish or fish oil. Some great sources of food you can add in is mackerel, salmon, cod liver oil, herring, sardines, not a big fan, but sardines are great, anchovies, caviar, if you want to be a little fancy, flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, but to be completely honest with you guys, it really does have to be coming from fatty cuts of fish because in order for you to get enough omega-3 fatty acids that you need from things like flax seeds, chia seeds, or walnuts, you literally have to be like beer, beer bonging these. So fish oils, take a supplementation and try, get in, try to get in more fatty cuts of fish through your diet. Number seven, 
zinc. Zinc is a mineral that is essential for the gut-brain connection, as well as supporting our gut lining too and preventing against intestinal permeability or a leaky gut. And most people are not getting in enough zinc, which can greatly affect their mental health. So top five foods for zinc, animal protein, of course, we talked so much about animal protein, shellfish, seeds, nuts, and eggs. Number eight, social connection and laughing. I love this prescription, but research has shown that human connection and positive emotions positively influence our body's vagal tone, which makes sense, right? Because that's our body's rest and digest state. And when we're around people, we're relaxed, we're laughing, we're having fun, we're feeling connected. We're going to be in a more relaxed state. So relationships, joy, such a crucial part of healing. And we need to start cultivating that more into our life. And then number nine, exercise. Exercise has so many positive mental health benefits. And it's one of the ways that we can produce, you know, positive feel good hormones immediately after we work out. We can physically change our state because our state oftentimes creates our emotions, but it also works to stimulate the body's vagus nerve. So, this is my exercise routine. You can take it, you can adapt some of the things from it, but I try to lift heavy about four times per week. I stretch every single day. I try to do yoga for maybe like 15 minutes. Um, that's kind of part of my stretching there. And then on the days where I'm not weightlifting, I try to at least walk for about 60 minutes every day. Basically, I'm moving my body every single day. In some way, shape, or form, I am always moving my body. For me, it is a non-negotiable. And it's not because I just want to be fit or have six-pack abs. Like, that was part of my goals early on. And, of course, who doesn't want to look good naked and be confident in their body? But it is the best way to change your state and to work on your mental health. Move your body, move your body, and watch what happens. So those are some of the top things that you guys can do right now to work on strengthening your body's vagus nerve, which is so essential for the mind, body, gut connection. But overall, the biggest thing I want you guys to take from today's podcast is healing is holistic. It's mind, it's body, it's getting to the root causes plurally so we can really develop the plan to heal. And when we can really identify what has caused our body to be off in the first place, this is when we can create a treatment plan combining proper nutrition, exercise, therapy, functional medicine, lab testing, looking at the different systems in the body in order to bring us back to a place of optimal health. And it doesn't mean we need to work on all of these things at once. For me, you know, I worked first a lot on the nutrition side of everything. It was through working on that and doing some of the functional medicine lab testing, identifying what was off in my gut, that I had bacteria overgrowth, leaky gut, and really beginning to ask the question why and paying attention to the fruits in my life, exhaustion, burnout, that I really started to do a lot of this inner work on myself. I started to really understand how the relationship with myself and the way I viewed myself and felt about myself was really the reasons why I was making so many of the decisions that I was making in my life, why I was pushing myself so much in fitness, coming from a place of unworthiness, coming from a place of not enough, which produced a lot of these health issues, gut issues. That was really the true root cause combined with some different dietary triggers there that I, I had to work on improving. The whole person truly must heal for the gut to function optimally. And it, it's so different for every single person, especially with what you need to work on first. For some people, it is the nutrition side. For some people, they need to get the lab testing and they need to identify what is off. For some people, it's working on the emotional side, the trauma side, the chronic stress side. But what I want you guys to do is to really get true with yourself 
and ask yourself, what do I feel like I need to work on first? Because usually when we slow down and we lean in and we listen, we know the answer. And I know it can feel overwhelming to feel like we have to like fix it all right now. And we don't, we don't have to fix it all right now. We used to take one step at a time, but it's taking that step. It's saying, you know what? I'm going to work with a coach. I'm going to work with a therapist. I'm going to change my nutrition. I'm going to begin to go on a healing journey. It's taking that next step. And I promise you the step after that one will begin to reveal itself. I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast about how trauma affects the gut and also some of the things that we can do to strengthen our body's vagus nerve. If you want to get more information about working with me and my team at Rachel's Your Nutrition, our coaching, our testing, you can book a free call with the link here in the show notes. This is Ben, Sheer Madness.